Now, before I start this one, I just want to make sure everyone's on the same page. Are you familiar with a fundraising activity known as a race night? I don't know if this is still really a thing anymore. It seemed quite popular in the 70s and 80s, but it might have died off now. I'll explain what it was for anyone that doesn't know, um, although I don't think I ever really attended one. Uh, it was when there was like a, a club, say a cricket club, golf club, rotary, that kind of thing. They wanted to raise money for something or other, usually a charity. They'd hold one of these race nights and they'd uh, get everyone around on this particular evening and there'd be a chat would show up back in my day. This would be a bloke with like a projector and a load of reels of film of horse races. And the idea was that the people there bet on the races and then he'd play the film and everyone would be like, hey, come on, you know, even though the horse had probably been dead 10 years by the time they'd seen the film. And uh, yeah, it was that kind of thing. And basically whatever money they got together went into this uh, charity pot. I've seen some DVD ones online for you to host at home. So it's still around, but I just don't know whether or not it's all that popular and whether or not it was popular around the world. Now, the thing I've got behind me here is uh, based around the same idea. It's from 1975, so this is before most people would have any kind of video recorder equipment in the house. So this is an audio race night. Now the way the races are run, this is the bit that's interesting to me, is that they're on um, records. Normal 12 inch, 33 and a third records. Now this has got the fourth race on one side and the third on the other. There's a total of six races inside the box. And you'd think that once you'd played this record, well, that's it. You know who's won the third race, for example, and you couldn't do it again. Not so. This has eight horses that could win this race, and you never know which one is going to win. It really is random. So that's what's interesting about it. I've got a random record here. And let me explain a little bit more about the game, and then we'll go on to how it all works. The idea is you play with a group of people. Over the course of a game, you bet on the outcomes of six races that are recorded across the three records. Each round, one player takes the turn to act as a bookmaker while the others are the punters, and at the end of the game, the person with the most money wins. It all sounds quite simple, but it gets itself way too bogged down in the bookmaker side of things. I think it must have been written by one. So it starts going into tote doubles, each way bets, and all that kind of stuff, and it just gets itself way too complicated. So let's just take a look at a record instead. I will be playing them at the right speed in this next section. It's just the commentary is by Noel Whitcomb, who has quite a high-pitched delivery. Now, each race is approximately two and a half minutes long, so I'm going to give you an abridged demonstration. So now we come to the sixth race, the Sporting Life Stakes for two-year-olds over five furlongs straight. And they're under starter's orders any moment now. They're off! One of the first to break is Gunner Smith, with Regal Bob also fast away, and Encheval between these two. Corioko missed the break there, but he's making up fast, and as they settle down, it's Regal Bob and Gunner Smith taking them on, with Encheval and Brummy in third and fourth. They're well in line for home now, and it's Encheval and Gunner Smith now the two leaders. And as they come to the furlong marker, it's Encheval, Gunner Smith, then Persian Rose in third. Then Thomas has really set Brummy here like, and he's going for that winning post like a homing pigeon with Rolls Royce engines. At the line, it's Brummy the winner. Corioko second, Persian Rose third, and then the early leaders, Gunner Smith and Regal Bob with Dusky Bell. Waiting. So the result of the Sporting Life Stakes is first number two, Brame, second number eight, Corioko, and third number one, Persian Rose. OK, now let's play that same disc again, but we're going to see who wins this time. And Regal Bob is making a desperate finish of it. Corioko trying to get on terms, but at the line is Dusky Bell, the winner, just holding on from Regal Bob in second and Corioko a length away in third place. So it's the same record, but we've got different results. Now, the idea of a record with multiple different outcomes goes back way earlier than this. Looking at a Wikipedia article, they mentioned one there from 1901 that was like a fortune-telling record with three different outcomes. The one that's mentioned to me more often than any other is the Monty Python album, and that one, they called it a three-sided disc because side B had two recordings on there. And of course, Jack White's done this with Lazaretto, and there's loads of other people done similar things as well over the years. But this one, with 
eight different outcomes. I think that is the, the most that I'm aware of anyway. And I double check this because I thought, well, they could have cheated. They could have just stuck three different horses winning and most people wouldn't notice. But no, I played it over and over again. Just kept putting the needle down until I got all eight individual horses to win. So yes, there are eight different outcomes to this record. How do they do it? Well, let me explain. So I'm sure everyone is aware that a standard record has a spiral groove with the audio cut into it. Well, you can, of course, put another spiral inside that spiral, keep them separate to one another and have different things recorded in each one. So, for example, in this one, I've drawn five different coloured spirals that don't touch one another. And if you imagine this spinning clockwise, well, depending upon when the needle touches the disc, it's going to travel down any one of those spirals. Now, of course, in reality, the grooves are a lot finer and closer packed together than they are in my diagram so even if I look at the record under a macro lens it's very difficult to see the separate running grooves. Now if I swap out my manual turntable for an automatic one then it's just push button and I'm completely out of the loop as to where that stylus will go down on the record so it really is pretty random. Now if you want to have a go for yourself pick a horse off this list numbers one through eight I'll play you an abridged version of a race and we'll see how you get on. I don't know who's going to win let's find out. They're off! Young Rascal was very fast away and is moving over to the rails with Admiral's Road in second and Echo Baby disputing it for this position with Perfect Scouse on the far side. But as they settle down, it's Admiral's Road taking it up from Young Rascal. Echo Baby in third. Then comes Jimmy O'Goblin and Perfect Scouse together in the centre. Bronze Sultan going well in sixth. And these are followed by Mike's Melody and last at this stage is D-Side. They come now to the final hundred yards and D-Side is fairly gobbling up the ground on the far side but he may just have left it too late because Perfect Scouse is now coming through with a rush and he looks very dangerous. Perfect Scouse is streaking ahead of the weakening Admiral's Road and Echo Baby but D-Side is gaining on him. D-Side is right up there with Perfect Scouse. D-Side is showing a tremendous turn of foot and at the line D-Side snatches it to win from Perfect Scouse with Jimmy O'Goblin running on well into third place. First number seven, D-Side. Second, number eight, Perfect Scouse. And third, number five, Jimmy O'Goblin. What I wanted to say about this, despite all the cleverness that's got into here, the ingenuity, it's all been thrown away with the game because the game, I just can't understand it. Now, I'm pretty sure I'm not alone there because I've seen a few of these for sale over the years and uh, they look like they've never been played with either. Honestly, it's just the most bizarre convoluted and confusing set of instructions and I never like those games where they kind of destruct as you use them you know you got these pieces of paper you're supposed to write the odds on them and all that kind of stuff but once you've done that of course you have to throw them away and eventually you run out of pieces of paper or you would if the game was any good this game you're gonna have that paper for the rest of your life so yeah um, a terrible game to go with a very clever idea but I hope you've enjoyed having a look at it here today but that's it for the moment as always thanks for watching